Hello, Chris Sexton here, TeamHeliPros.com. Welcome to my third video in my Miniature Aircraft Whiplash E build series. Um, today's video is going to talk about a couple of things. Um, we're going to get into what I'm thinking I'm going to do with my electronics, where I'm planning to put them, and uh, how I'm going to uh, accomplish the electronics behind this bird. There are a lot of interesting ideas I've been tossing around. Uh, I kept waffling between RX Pack, BEC. I even looked at, at one point, the Scorpion Commanders with the Beck built in. Um, decided to get away from that. They're hard to find. And, you know, for the price difference, I could have always bought a BEC or a Flight Pack. Um, I keep waffling on how I'm going to wire my batteries, where I'm going to put things on the bird. Um, so I think I'm just going to try to keep it simple, do a real quick video. Uh, real quick, I'm going to recap my thoughts on the electronics. Um, this part of the video, this is strictly my personal preferences and what I'm personally doing. There are so many different combinations you could do for this. There's high volt, there's standard, there's outrage servos, Fatava servos, JR servos, Savic servos. I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit. What actual components you put on your bird really should reflect your own personal preference. Um, I've come become quite fond of my V-bars, so my first thought was obviously V-bar. Being that it's a big bird, uh, I don't want to run a lot of extensions if I can help it. The idea of the full-size V-bar allowed me to put the gyro in the obvious spot and then use the set, space, the control board, in the middle somewhere so I don't have to put a bunch of extensions on the servos works for me. I, um, there's different discussions on the forums as far as what kind of servo arms to use, which ones work best. Should you use the stock ones? Should you use the ones that come with the servos? Mikado has a really nice um, servo arm that a lot of guys, including Robert Abel's, like. Um, what I've decided to do is pretty simple. I have these. This is a carbon fiber uh, servo arm that came with my Synergy E7. Now, I was not able to use them on the E7 because these are designed to bolt right to the Fatava small ser um, servo wheels. Now, obviously, you can get servo wheels for the JRs. Uh, my E7 has the JR8917 high volts on it. I did not have an arm, um, a wheel already this would bolt to without modifying. Um, it was, if I was gonna go to the store and buy a drill bit to drill out the arms, it was just as easy to buy a set of Dupro. 20 millimeter arms for that. So I have a set of these carbon fibers. Um, Robert Abel's actually made the point that he likes the Mikados because they're a 20 millimeter spacing. That's great for his geometry. Well, that is exactly what these are. Center to center, 20 millimeter. For the same reason, the um, Sin G7 likes the 20 millimeter for geometry. So these are perfect. And as you can see, they bolt right to the Fataba wheels. I'm going to use these. Um, what you guys use, completely up to you. Dupro has a nice set. Mikado apparently has a beautiful set of arms for these. Um, really strong. I've not personally used them, but they come highly recommended with Robert Abel's. Uh, I'm going to use those. Um, I am running full-size V-bar, SAT ready, two Spectrum DSMX SATs. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, in a minute, we're going to get into it. I'm going to plug our electronics in. Uh, I like to pre-program, bind, and center my servos before I put them on the bird. A couple of reasons for that. One, it's easier to lay it all on the table here. I can, I know enough about the head geometry now to know which server is going to be which uh, in the, in the uh, V-bar setup. So I'll go through in a second, plug everything in, lay them out, you know, decide which servo channel one, which is two, three, and rudder. Bind them, center the servos, go through the setup on the V-bar far enough to, to know which channel goes in which spot on the burb. That way I can center these power them up and have them centered and set my arms at 90 degrees as close as I can. Just step one and have any really well put together. I sh strive to have a mechanically level swash. I, I know you can adjust it with with the trim and the V-bar, but I go I do everything I um, possibly can to have it mechanically accurate. Um, so I'm going to take a second. I'm going to plug everything in. Um, and program the, the V-Bar, get, get through that part. Um, probably not going to film that. If you're looking for a, a video on how to do the initial setup on the V-Bar, how, how to send the servos, I highly recommend 
Um, Smack Talk RC, um, Bobby Watts and Burt Kammerer did a fantastic video. Uh, Burt was in the video, but you know those guys work together on how to do the complete setup on the V-Bar. The initial five steps of the setup, I literally stole from that video. It, it worked, it made so much sense to me. I just do it that way, so I'm not going to film that. If you like that, if you want to know how I did it, I strongly suggest best, well worth $3 to download the video. Um, so next time we meet, I'll have the V-Bar programmed, my servos arm, servos labeled for the bird, servo arms on them, and uh, we'll be talking about ESC and um, battery placements. Okay, here we are. Um, I got the servo wheels on. Um, everything's bound up, ready to go. As you can see, everything's moving. Um, I did figure out which servo was which. You know, channel one on the on the Mikados is always the elevator servo. They kind of channel two, three, two and three follow around the swash clockwise. So this one right here is going to be channel one, which is elevator. This is going to be left side. Uh, I call it aileron. Right side pitch. Um, or aileron pitch left right whichever you want to call it and this is the rudder servo now I did put Loctite on these nuts and bolts holding the CF um, Arms onto the the wheels and I put a little bit of Loctite on the nut on the back side of these three swash balls Just to keep them tight, you know, I've never had one back out But Loctite is always a good idea on metal on metal parts. I have not put the ball on the rudder servo just yet I want to wait until I have it mounted and I'm playing with the the linkage rod lengths. Um, they tell you to use 14 millimeters and to use it slightly off the side, which would, by the instructions, would tell me to put it here. But um, I like to make sure my resolutions are perfect, my throws are centered, I can get maximum travel out of the servo. So I will hold off on doing that ball until it's actually on the bird and I have linkage together. But I got the rest of those done. Um, I have decided to. Um, to side on my placements a little bit and this might be a little hard I apologize it's going to look upside down but these servos mount on this frame here with the back of the servo coming out this way with the wire coming out here so what I'm going to do I'm going to get a little creative here I'm going to take the servo wires and tuck them down run them along the motor mount and down the back to the control unit under the right back here under the main shaft. That is going to allow me to do it. I may have to come this way around. I'm not sure. Having the control unit for the V-Bar directly under the main shaft does two things for me. One, it eliminates the need for a lot of extensions. The elevator server will definitely reach. Um, before I plugged everything in, I double checked it. This one gets to about here, no problem. So if I can get the back of the V-Bar control panel to about here, I shouldn't have any problems with servo wire length. The elevator, the, the rudder servo has a extension on it in the form of the step down, the step down regulator 5.1. So that's going to be, plus the, the rudder servos and the Vitavo servos are, rudder servo wires on the rudder servos are always so long to begin with, I'll have no trouble getting back here without any additional extensions. Then I'm going to put the sensor on the plate where it belongs, with the wire coming out the front, rolling under. Again, control unit back here, sensor up here. Um, then I asked myself the question, if I put the control unit back here with the tail boom on there, how do I get to it if I need to make any tweaking and adjustments and tuning the control unit? I certainly don't want to be um, pulling the tail boom off every time I want to change the control unit. What I'm actually going to do, I'm a computer guy by nature, um, I'm actually going to take a small 3 inch USB extension and permanently mount it you know, plug it into the back of the control unit, put a little hot glue on it, hold it in just like you do the servo leads. And then on the back of the frame right here, under where the torque where the boom comes out, I'm going to have that USB plug hanging off the back here. So if I need to make a tweak to my flyboard controller, i got a plug around the back. It won't be a problem. I did something very similar with the castle links on my castle ESCs. It works great. Speaking of ESCs, the couple of different options. I've, I originally said I was going to put the ESC here. I've changed my mind. I'm going to put my flight pack, let's get stuck on the Velcro, I'm going to put my flight pack there. So what I'm going to do with the ESC, I've seen this on the forums, pretty common the way, these slots here are actually there for cooling to put the ESC right here. So what you do, the motor mounts go down behind the gyro plate, 
plug into the ESC down here. I will end up taking this front plate and gyro plate off to put the ESC in. Won't be a problem. And then I'm going to have one of my two um, series wires coming out this hole. The typical Minch aircraft, they give you a nice rubber grommet for that hole. The other one coming out this side with a jumper wire going through the both holes, no problem. So I'll have this front pack plugged in on this side, the back pack plugged in on this side, and that will complete my 12 cell. I am going to, as I said a second ago, I'm going to put my RX pack right here. And I have decided to go back to using a Beck Pro. Something to regulate this two cell lipo down to six volts, no problem. And then the step down for the rudders. Um, I like using this lipo. It's a two cell, 7.4 volt, obviously. 2200 milliamps. With these servos, that's easily four or five flights. Um, the way I fly, no problem. And these sky lipos charge really well. I can do three cell charging, three C charging on this, no problem which is going to keep the battery topped off faster than I can keep my flight packs topped off. So that won't be a problem. I have a nice portable charging rig for that. That won't be a problem. So that's the general idea. Um, I'm going to call quits there tonight. I know I I'd hoped originally to get all the electronics on it and finish this video with the bird complete and ready to um, do the head setup. But unfortunately uh, my family event that made me not finish this video last night is uh, went a little more in my evening than I thought it would. And I'm going to have to, I haven't got any of the soldering done. The ESC is still in the box. Um, so tomorrow when we pick up, I'll have all my soldering done. Everything kind of test fitted. Servos on. Fly bars controller in the right place. I'll do a quick pass by all the electronics with these front plates off so you know where I put things. And then we will go straight into the actual head setup. And so there will be four videos. Um, this video is going to be nice and short. Tomorrow's video will also be a lot shorter than the half hour the other ones have been running. And um, we'll get this bird in the air. Hopefully um, the weather holds Monday or Tuesday. Uh, again, Chris Sexton with Team Heli Pros. Thank you so much for following along. This has been a blast to build. Um, everything's straightforward. Everything has just fit. I haven't had to modify a, a bunch of stuff like you do on some builds. Very well done miniature aircraft. Uh, it's top-notch kit.